Hello, design lovers. I'm Ashley Childers, and I'm so excited for today's video because I am sharing with you a beautiful and easy fall tablescape that you can use this season, as well as taking you on a garden tour. And I'm so excited about it because although it is fall, I have a lot of really beautiful blooming flowers in our garden, and I cannot wait to see what you think about it. Now, I know you're going to love today's video, so be sure to hit the subscribe button because we drop a new design video every week. So before I go through all of the items that you need to create our fall tablescape, I want to talk to you a little bit about my inspiration this year. So I love a living tablescape and if you are entertaining outdoor this season, it's the perfect place to put together a living centerpiece. So that's what we're going to do today. And my inspiration this year was the really beautiful soft greens and lavenders that you see in fall kale and in purple cone flowers. I have those in my garden and I really wanted to incorporate them into the tablescape this season. So what you're going to need to create this beautiful, unique tablescape is, I grabbed some various kale at the local greenhouse and I like getting different textures. So I've got a couple of different ones with various textures. I got five of them. You could get more if you wanted to, you could vary the size, but I like the little four inch pots. They're just easy and low for a tablescape. Then I grabbed uh, several flats of Dusty Miller and I love Dusty Miller. I think it's beautiful but it also has that soft green color that I want to use in this year's table decor. As a bonus, when you buy flats of these little um, plants at the greenhouse, you're going to get these trays and they come in them. And this is exactly the size that I wanted to use. We're going to be using three of these for the centerpiece. So be sure to keep these when you get them, when you're buying your plants every season. Then you're going to need to cut a few pieces, three pieces if you're doing three of the trays of landscape fabric. We had this in the garage and I just cut three pieces of it and it's going to fit right down inside of my tray and keep all of the dirt inside the tray and allow for the tray to drain so that I can water it you know, several times a week, let it drain and keep the table centerpiece for several weeks. Honestly, you could probably even have it on the table for a month or two. Some tape and then, um, oh, over here behind, let, let me just show you, I don't know if you can see what is hiding behind our, our moss, but Delta's decided that she wants to be a design assistant again today. Every time we film outside, she's my design assistant, so she's working really hard today, as you can tell. Um, we have a bowl of sheet moss. You're going to see what we do with that in a minute, but grab a couple of bags of sheet moss. And then these are floral pens, and we're going to use these to, um, you can get these at the craft store or a floral supply place, whatever you have locally. Uh, you could probably get them on Amazon too, but we're gonna use those to secure our moss to the sides of our little trays. And then last but not least, these are so fun. I grabbed a big bag of these at the Floral Supply Center and I love using these. So it's a little water vial for a floral stem. And you'll see what we're gonna do with these in a minute, but they extend the life of your stems and they're just really fun to kind of stick into a table arrangement like this, or you could do it into your garland in the holidays if you wanted to mix some fresh floral into your garland. So these are super inexpensive and just a really fun addition to a table centerpiece. So now that we know what we need, let's get started on creating our table centerpiece. So let's start making our centerpiece. First of all, put your garden gloves on because we're going to be working with some potting soil and of course our little plants. So I always like to put my garden gloves on because I don't get dirt underneath my nails if I do that. So we've got the tray we talked about earlier and our piece of landscape fabric and you can just push that down into the tray and it kind of stays 
And then we're just gonna put a little bit of, well, I said it stays, but it will in a minute. We're gonna put a little bit of potting soil down in there just to have a nice base for our plants. So sprinkle that down into your tray just a little bit where the bottom is covered. You'll understand why you don't want to fill it up too much in a minute. Oh, Delta. Delta's getting into the into the potting soil. You getting into the, you don't know what this is? She jumps down into that. <laughs> okay, so we've got our potting soil all down into our tray. And if you cut your tray, I'm sorry, if you cut your landscape fabric, If you get your landscape fabric a little bit too big or whatever, or you want to secure the sides, just do so with some tape. I mean, you could use outdoor tape, but honestly, masking tape's fine. So you can just take the edges and just kind of tape them down if you want to. You totally don't have to do this step, but you could. No big deal. Okay, now that we've got that all done, let's start adding our plants and this is really fun. So we're ready to start adding our plants now that we've got the soil down in the bottom and the edges are all secure. So I wanna start with the two kale. And what you're gonna to wanna to do when you are adding the, there's a little snail in there, when you're adding the plants to your tray because the tray is so shallow when we want it shallow, take your plants and kind of just loosen the bottom of them. I, I do this when I'm planting any plants, but this gets a much like, it's not quite as deep. Your, all of your roots are still there. And then you can just put it in there and it, it stays underneath the, the like side of your tray. And I like, I used, I'm gonna use two on this one and one on the other one. You could put, like I said, as many as you want, but I'm gonna just kind of have them on opposing sides like that. Okay, now it's time to add our Dusty Miller. And same thing goes with the Dusty Miller. When you are adding them, go ahead and like get as much of, not all of the dirt out, but kind of squish them. Get a good amount of the dirt out. And then the key to make this look full is to place the Dusty Miller where it hangs over the edge. So we're gonna go all the way around the edge, actually, both sides, front and back. Not these ends because you only want to do the ends on the two sides that are going to be like on the ends of the table. So I'm going to keep adding my Dusty Miller and you can see the finished product in just a sec. We've got our cabbage, or kale, sorry, and our Dusty Miller in the little tray. And just so you can like plan for what you need to buy, if you were to do three trays down the center, this tray took an entire flat of Dusty Miller. And then I've got the kale as well, so, or cabbage. So what you're gonna wanna do after you've put it all in there and kind of fanned everything out, just take a couple of scoops of potting soil and just fill in little areas if there's any spaces between the Dusty Miller so that you can really keep this the entire season. I like to just fill mine in, kind of pat it down, and that way you've really got a planting that will last, you know, if you water it, and it'll last for a couple of months. I finished up putting all of the Dusty Miller and the kale in to our little trays and I've lined them up down the center of the table. I like to do this first because I want 
to start putting on the moss and I just want to go around the outside because I'm not going to move this centerpiece. I'm going to leave it here for a couple of weeks. So our next step is to add the sheet moss to the outside and I just grabbed this at the local craft store. I honestly keep this around the house all the time because I use it a ton when I'm making floral arrangements. So we're just going to pull off some pieces and secure them around the entire perimeter of the tray with our little floral pin. the centerpiece all except for the addition of our purple cone flowers. So I clipped these from the garden. We have a whole little raised bed full of them. And I love these because the color uh, ties in with the color palette that I wanted to use for the season, but also they have a really rigid stem. So they're perfect to use in this way. So I filled up our little water vials with water and then I'm literally just sticking our stems down in and I'm just going to place them throughout the entire tablescape, kind of covering up the little vial. So here we are, we have the finished centerpiece and I, oh, I love how it turned out. I think it is just so unique and whimsical and very, very festive for fall. So you're going to see me add in the table linens and our plates and place settings and everything. And I'm keeping in that color of kind of mossy green and lavender. And I feel like this color palette's super unexpected for fall, but it's totally keeping with nature and it looks absolutely beautiful. Okay, so here we have our finished tablescape. And I want to just walk through all of the elements with you real quick. So everything on the table with the exception of the Dusty Miller and cabbage in the center, I actually had. So the table, um, the little placemats, I had all of the flatware and the plates and the glasses and even the linens. And because I wanted to kind of tap in to the colors of the purple cone flower, I was able to use these really pretty linen. They're like a nubby linen placemats. They have got a little fringe edge and they're the perfect like soft sage color. I can use these all year long. I think it's just a really beautiful neutral, but it's perfect for this table setting. Then I accented it with these lavender linen napkins and I use these a lot as well. Lavender is one of my very favorite colors. Um, I tend to lean towards neutrals uh, warm neutrals when I decorate my home. But if you've seen some of my other videos, you know that lavender is one of my favorite colors to decorate with in the spring. And so I had these beautiful linen napkins and wanted to use them because they're the perfect color to tie into the purple cone flowers. I accented everything with a really beautiful set of vintage flatware that I have. It's a beautiful bronze color. And then these fun etched uh, antique glasses that I purchased in Mississippi when I was on, on a trip with my mom and my sister. We thrifted that day and so these have a lot of sentimental value to me and they're the perfect just kind of accent for this easy and elegant tablescape. Now that we've done our full table, we're ready to entertain outdoors for the fall season. I want to take you on a quick garden tour. We have changed out some of the flowers in our garden and a lot of our 
pot and I want to show you what all we've used. Of course, we've accented with pumpkins. Now we are in Arkansas, so I still have a lot of my summer flowers blooming, but I think you will enjoy seeing kind of what we do have done in the garden to usher in the fall season. So really quick before I take you on the garden tour, I had to stop at our outdoor kitchen area because I wanted to show you how I decorated our floating shelves for fall. Normally during the spring and summer, I put all of my extra pots and watering cans and all of the kind of spring and summer necessities for gardening on these shelves. But because it's fall, I wanted to decorate it in a beautiful fall style. So I've just added in some pots with cabbage and then various sizes and colors of pumpkins. It's a really kind of minimal statement, but I think it's so beautiful and I love actually just kind of how it brings fall and the feeling of fall into this area that we spend so much time in. Now, let's get to the garden tour. So we have moved out into the garden and before I take you on a tour, I want to, to tell you that last year at this time was when we completed all of the hardscapes for our garden and started some of the preliminary planting. We added more plants in this spring, so spring of 2023, but I just want you to be encouraged that you can grow a really beautiful lush garden in less than a year. I'm so pleased with how much this whole entire garden grew in this summer. And I know of course, another year from now, it's going to look even more lush and filled in and beautiful. So, as a lot of you know, we are in the South. We live in Arkansas, my home is in Arkansas. So we are still having pretty warm weather. This, this week, I think we got up into the 90s. Um, I would love it to be a little bit cooler, but that's just the reality for us. Fall sometimes is hot. So in my garden, I have a mix of still some of my summer annuals that I planted. And then I started adding in some of my fall and winter plants like my pansies and things like that to just kind of bring some of that fall freshness and color into the garden. So in this space, I have got three raised beds and we added in viburnum down the center. So I've got a tree version over here and then these Korean spice viburnum and those will fill in and be beautiful when they bloom next spring. I added in some Swedish ivy, and honestly, the Swedish ivy did not do fantastic throughout the heat of the summer, but now it looks really, really pretty and lush, and I love it. So I'm happy we kept it in there and didn't rip it out. I added in a couple of little kind of sections of some pansies, and I wanted to share the name of these adorable pansies with you because I have never seen them. You might have, but they are called inspire and the color is peach shade and they are so sweet they have this little ruffled edge and are in the softest colors of blush and peach coral a little bit of yellow and some lavenders so i just think they're a really beautiful color palette to take me all the way through winter and into next spring also something to note i had never planted this is called i've got to tell you i had to keep these so i could tell you euphorbia i had never planted this before and i'm just absolutely love it i will definitely add it to more of our beds next spring it just kind of took over and has this really beautiful billowy shape these tiny little white flowers and it looked good all summer long so if you are in the deep south like me that's a go-to plant if you want that kind of overgrown English garden look. Also, over here in this bed, this pink salvia has been literally the hero of the garden from the time I planted it in early spring until now. It has not stopped blooming. The color of the little petals is so beautiful. And although most of the hummingbirds have left, they've like actually last week we saw, we have probably 30 hummingbirds throughout the day. Every day we had hummingbird feeders. They of course love all the flowers we had in the garden. And then last week they all kind of started migrating out. So we only have one little green hummingbird left, but they absolutely 
adored this pink salvia and it just looked good all season long. So if you're looking for something that can be a really beautiful workhorse and kind of give you that texture um, and like I said, that kind of English garden look, definitely choose pink salvia next season. Before we move on to the other side of our garden, I just wanted to talk a little bit about decorating your steps for fall. So I really wanted to bring just that fun and exciting energy that I think of when I think of fall to our back patio area, because this is really where we spend so much of our time, especially in the cooler months. So I wanted to decorate it in a way that's going to last me from now, or actually I did this in September all the way through till we change everything out for the holiday season. So I've added in mums, some cabbage, pansies, and then accented everything with some pumpkins and gourds. And if you have watched my front porch fall kind of reveal video, you'll know that I love decorating with muted tones when it comes to my pumpkin and gourd display. So I've got really beautiful soft greens, kind of some blushy oranges, terracotta, and then white pumpkins. And I've used those on the steps in on our um, exposed shelving in the kitchen area of our outdoor space and then on the other staircase that's on the other side that I'll show you in just a minute. So if you are looking to decorate kind of your entrance of your home or your porch area for the fall season, I recommend doing it in a color palette that accents your interior spaces and your garden area. Now we've moved over to the other side of our outdoor entertaining area to what I like to call the kitchen garden, although it's not really a kitchen garden because it's filled with flowers. But I just had to show you this little corner of my garden because I did not think that this would happen this year. So I have always wanted to have dahlias in my garden and I tried it this year. I grew them from tubers and quite frankly, they just looked like absolute poo most of the summer. They were wilty. They just looked sad. It gets so hot in Arkansas in the summer, but several of them made it through the summer. And now that the weather is cooling off a little bit, they have started to bloom and they're so beautiful. I'm absolutely obsessed with them. I will grow them every year, even though I know it's frustrating throughout the summer. My husband helped me. We really took a lot of care of these and they have just gone crazy in the last month. So there are two varieties in this raised bed. I have Cafe Ole and labyrinth and that's all I did. Some of the tubers like they grew up but it got so hot they kind of wilted and they ended up dying but the ones that made it through the summer have just exploded with blooms and they will continue to bloom all the way through until frost which honestly in Arkansas will be late. It'll be in November maybe even December with global warming I don't know but this is my favorite little corner of the garden and I just wanted to share it with you and wanted to prove to everyone that even when you live in the South, you can have beautiful dahlias. We have moved over one raised bed to what is the wildest flower bed I have in my entire garden, but I absolutely love it. This flower bed did not look like this uh, several months ago. We had a photo shoot here at our house and <laughs> None of these flowers were blooming except for the roses, but now they're all just abundant and blooming and overgrown and I love it. So it's kind of hard to see because not a lot of the roses are blooming right now. They flushed out like last week, but I've got several varieties of garden roses. I purchased them all through David Austin Roses. I highly recommend that site if you want to buy bare root roses. We planted them bare root and they've all just grown so wonderfully this season. Of course, some purple cone flower. I mixed in some purple lantana. And that's all that's in this bed. So literally three things, roses, purple coneflower, and lantana. My sweet husband loves to give the flowers their food every week. And so they just grow prolifically. And I love how long the purple coneflower and of course the lantana last. Like 
they just look beautiful for weeks and weeks and weeks. And if you cut the purple coneflower and bring them in to create an arrangement in, inside, they actually last a really long time as well. So this is what we used earlier in our beautiful fall tablescape. Now let's walk up to our, all of our steps. I'm just gonna show you some of the additions that I made to our garden for fall. Now I know that earlier I showed you the small set of steps with that was on the other side of our patio, but this is the large set of steps. And I love kind of decorating and adding seasonal interest in these pots and on these steps. So for fall, of course, mums. And then I added in these sweet little white pansies. I always like to buy my mums closed up. I know it's a little bit hard and sometimes we want that instant gratification, but I've got a really beautiful purple mum. These will be purple. And this is this gorgeous burgundy color. Also, I added in these glossy abelia and I love these, they smell a little bit like honeysuckle. They have such a sweet fragrance. And I added these throughout our yard outside of our like fenced garden area last fall because I was told that they were deer tolerant, but the deer ate every single one of them. They've grown back and filled in a little bit, but these actually will get really big and beautiful and they're semi evergreen. So they're a beautiful billowy addition to this fall vibe that I have going on on the steps to our garden. I hope that you enjoyed today's fall tablescape tutorial and the garden tour. We are gearing up for all of our holiday content and I cannot wait to share all of our holiday decor with you this year. I hope that today's video inspires you to just embrace the new season and create beautiful moments in your outdoor spaces. Now, if you want a little sneak peek into all of our daily design adventures, check us out over on Instagram at Ashley Childers Home and of course on Pinterest. It's a really good place to get some beautiful inspiration. Now, if you want even more design goodness right now, you're going to wanna to watch this playlist next. As always, I'm Ashley Childers. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, good design is for everyone. So create a home that inspires you. Have fun embracing the new season ahead and fall in love with where you live one room at a time. Mm -hmm.